Britain, autumn 2021. The sun is out, tourists are back, and masks are no longer required in most places. Life here just seems so normal now. It's really hard to imagine this country has had one of the world's worst COVID outbreaks. About one in eight people has caught the virus. 138,000 people have died. While everyone suffered in one way or another during the pandemic, one group has had to deal with an additional dose of vitriol. These are just four of the hundreds of attacks that took place in the early months of the COVID-19 outbreak on people of Chinese heritage. I usually spend a few weeks a year with my family in Britain until COVID made that impossible in 2020. The Britain I remembered wasn't a hostile place. So in this edition of Undercover Asia, I've returned to the UK. I want to find out if people who look like me are still living in fear. And what would it take to stop Asian hate in Britain? The publicist just came to him and called him Chinese virus and spat at him. I was quickly outnumbered and punched. Inside the shop? Yeah, inside the shop. A few weeks into my stay in the UK, another racially motivated attack on an ethnic Chinese minority. Beaten so badly, Yuan Zhao needed reconstructive surgery to his nose. Two weeks after his attack, I'm on my way to Cambridge to see him. Yuan Zhao? Hi, I'm Wei. Nice to meet yeah, you. Nice to meet you. Are, are you feeling okay? Physically, I'm feeling much better compared with two weeks ago. Yeah, but still, um, I'm still recovering from the, the first surgery on my nose. Oh, wow, that sounds painful. I'm really sorry to hear that. So this is where it happened? Yeah, this is, this is it. It was just a normal Saturday night. Just down the milk aisle, I was shopping, and then this group of people, uh, so one of them twisted my ear from behind really hard. So they, they were also ranting some racial slurs at me. I realized it was originally motivated uh, harassment and attack. Okay. How, how many people were we talking about? Um, there were about 10 people. 10? A yeah, there were 10, 10 people. They were mostly teenagers, so if things got physical, they kind of pushed me around as well. So I had defended myself, but there were just too many of them. So I was quickly outnumbered and punched from like a lot of people. Did anyone help you? Uh, the security did, um, did nothing to help me. Yuan Zhao went to Cambridge for his master's degree and now works as an AI engineer. I know it's been 18 months since the start of COVID, but do you think it's still got something to do with it? Uh, so personally, I think it has certainly um, been a catalyst. Is Yuan Zhao's case an isolated incident, or has the tolerant Britain I knew been torn into pieces by the pandemic? Eh, well, I'm missing Dala. The easiest way to get an idea, ask my friends who have been here all along. 
I was reading in the newspapers that in the early months of COVID, obviously I wasn't there, but there was a three time jump in attacks on people who look like us. Did any of you guys have a first hand experience with that? There was a time when I was waiting for a car, like a car slowly approached me and stopped um, in front of me. A guy went down the window and called me Chinese virus. I think I have a similar experience last year in the grocery store. So I just like passed by and then someone like came in front of me and then singing Corona, Corona. How did it make you feel? I didn't know what to feel. And then I went to like a park and sit down and my tears just like ran down. While I've heard about a few brutal physical attacks on Chinese looking people, the more pervasive and verbal abuse that my friends had just described took me by surprise. It's not widely discussed in the media here. In the US, you do see a lot of coverage of Asian hate. Here, not so much. Do you think the problem is just not as bad here or is just lack of media interest? I think it's a voice not strong we raised. You feel East Asians don't have a voice? No, I, I don't think so. I feel like it's because of the population. It's a little bit smaller than the US, so maybe the voice is not as big as other ethnic groups. We're 18 months into the pandemic, though. Do you feel things have improved a bit? I'm not so sure about that. People's idea of like the virus and Chinese are like they're linked together, are very ingrained in their mind. So recently I was like in the restaurant and then there's a guy there was a guy who came and talked to us and then he tried to guess like me and my friends where we are from and then so when he pointed at me and he said you china coronavirus still yeah so it's recently To get a clearer picture, I've decided to file a freedom of information request with the London Metropolitan Police. I want to know if the number of hate attacks on Chinese looking people has declined at all compared to a year and a half ago. We'll respond within 20 working days. So that's about a month. We'll hear back in a month. But just how easy is it for victims to seek justice? I'm in a Hackney neighborhood of London to seek out Jabez Lam. He's been helping the Chinese community deal with racially motivated attacks. Uh, last year, um, the anti Eastern and Southeast Asian hate are uh, quite prominent. And uh, I have dealt with quite a few cases. In fact, I'm about to visit a client. He'd been attacked three times last year. And, uh, three times? Yeah. Jabez agrees to let me tag along to meet his client, Mr. Wu. So this is the spot where Mr. Wu uh, was attacked a second time. He saw the perpetrator and his family were on the side of the road. And the perpetrators just came to him and called him Chinese virus and spat at him. and. They went out of their way to come to him to attack yeah. you. Yeah. How often does something like that happen? During the pandemic, it's a lot. Uh, I have a number of uh, members came to me and report about incidents uh, similar to Mr. Wu's experience. It's an issue of pandemic, issue of racial attack, an issue of a struggle to get the police recognized. I'm not going to talk to you. Hello,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,
but it sums up best the profile of the victims in COVID-related attacks. People who are either Chinese by heritage or appear Chinese to the perpetrators. Just so I'm clear, you're here at home. What are you afraid of? For most of its time in the UK, Mr. Vu has lived a quiet life in this public housing flat until a new family moved in upstairs in 2019. Since then, Mr. Vu says they've caused frequent water leaks and have flooded his apartment. When Mr. Vu asked them to stop, the husband proceeded to beat him up three times, twice at home, once on a street. The third time, police came and arrested the perpetrator. But then uh, he didn't realize that uh, the perpetrator was released afterward. He kept receiving continued harassment from above, uh, throwing rubbish downstairs and shouting at him. He was very scared. 那警察只是捉了對方,就告訴他們去襲擊他 in Britain, hate crimes are punished more harshly by law. Take assault, for example. Common assault can lead to six months in prison. But if it's driven by racial or religious hatred, offenders can serve four times as long to a maximum of two years. For the perpetrator to be convicted of racially aggravated assault, he'll need to be charged by the prosecutor with such a crime first. So Jabez is still trying to get the police to properly investigate the racial factor. It did start as a neighbor's dispute, right? To what extent can we say it's driven by racial hatred? Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, the situation is that this is start with, uh, with the, the neighbor's dispute. Uh, but last year, with the uh, COVID-19 and the kind of uh, land great use by Trump and the kind of atmosphere that generate, uh, that people feel that, uh, that uh, it is all right uh, to abuse East and South East So you think the pandemic emboldened the perpetrator? Definitely. A lot of people felt that uh, the pandemic gave them the passport uh, to abuse and that uh, uh, they would get resonance from people around them and they won't get challenged. Uh, and unfortunately, that is what happened last year. Because Mr. Wu's perpetrator is yet to be tried in court, I couldn't confront him directly or disclose his identity, but I wanted to verify Mr. Wu's story with a third party. Are you aware of the situation between Mr. Wu and his up upstairs off. neighbor? Yeah, it was December 12, 2020. Um, he came knocking on my door. I could see that Wu was physically shaken, very upset. Apparently, the neighbor upstairs knocked on Wu's door proceeded to punch him in the jaw. Yeah. As Wu fell on the floor, he continued to kick him in the groin. So where he managed to get up, come get me, which I managed to get him back indoors. That's very kind of you. Oh no, I mean, he's been a great neighbor. I've never had an issue with Wu at all. Jabez says the pandemic is an excuse for aggressors to act out Asian hate. But where did the hate actually come from? That's what I want to find out next. In the early months of the COVID-19 pandemic, the UK reported a sharp rise in attacks on East and Southeast Asian people. I keep wondering who would see someone like me as a legitimate target. And I've been doing searches, but can't find much at all on the perpetrators. 
That's why I'm meeting someone at Leicester University to find out. Professor Neo Chakraborty is the UK's leading expert on hate crimes. There seems to be a lot of reports of the initial attacks, but I haven't been able to find out, you know, who the perpetrators are and what happened to them. Why, why is that? Sometimes cases can take months, if not years, to work their way through a very clogged up criminal justice system. So often, if the perpetrator is a minor, there will be confidentiality. We won't get to know much about that process. Are minors responsible for quite a significant portion of hate crimes? The official figures can be quite skewed, but typically, yes, minors can be responsible for a significant proportion, either individually uh, or as part of groups. Juvenile offenders in the UK are not jailed for most offences, except the most serious crimes, such as murder. For hate crimes, they're more likely to do community service and receive counselling. Where did the hate come from? They're so young. Yeah, I think um, we're not born with hate. Um, so these are feelings of prejudice and hostility that are learned from the environments in which we grow up in, the environments in which we socialise. What do you mean? I think we've seen all across the Western world a growth and perhaps a normalisation of language that previously used to be the preserve of the far right and increasingly that's been normalised and legitimised by politicians. So you mentioned the far right. How influential do you think they are? I don't think their ideology is perhaps as popular as they might believe, but I think the far right have an important role to play in, in perpetuating hate speech and hate acts, but it's more of an indirect influence. Britain's far right occasionally takes to the streets to demand an end to non-white immigration. But they're most active online. Well, I recently joined a telegram group in Britain run by someone called Jada Franson. A quick search and you find several conspiracy theories regarding China and the virus. But in some ways, the comments left by other people in the group can be even worse. A UK government report on COVID names Jada Franson as one of the far-right forces radicalizing young people. She's been convicted and jailed for harassing the Muslim community before, but it seems that since the COVID pandemic, she's found a new target. I wrote to Jada Franson requesting an interview because I really want to get inside the mind of a racist. Surprisingly, she actually agreed to it. I assume she knows I'm Chinese. Just look at my name. That's a pretty big giveaway. She wants to meet away from the public view, citing death threats she's received. That's why we found ourselves in a countryside of Kent. Donnie here is on your security team. Yes. Are you a professional bodyguard? Or? Yeah, I'm no. Are you actually an activist, really? Yeah, you? activist. So you're doing this on a voluntary basis? Yeah. OK. When you mentioned about the threats against you, I was a little surprised. How often does that happen to you? Oh, daily, if I, if I were to pay attention. Do you think this is specifically about you or generally sort of the world is quite dangerous for people of your ethnicity? Specifically, it's about me and what I've said and what I've done. You don't think the world overall is quite dangerous oh, for no, white people? Oh, absolutely. I believe that the, especially this country is very dangerous. For white people? Increasingly more dangerous for white people, thanks to mass immigration and multiculturalism, yes. I grew up in South East London. I'm not, it's not safe for me to be in South East London anymore because I am white. It's interesting that Jada Franson thinks the UK is a dangerous place for its majority white population, though there have been high profile terrorist attacks, like the killing of MP Sir David Amos. Fear is certainly not the feeling I get from most people I know.
I actually follow your Telegram channel. I did see you posting in the Telegram channel that it's a Chinese-made virus. It's the Wuhan virus, this evil virus that China unleashed onto the world. Uh, well, the Telegram, the, the Telegram channel isn't just managed by me, so there are other admins. And I know that a lot of admins share a lot of kind of populist um, content. I, I'll be completely honest with you, I do not sit and hold a massive grudge against China. But the things that went out on your Telegram channel have had real life effects. We've seen people who look like me, they're either Chinese or perceived to be Chinese, getting attacked oh, in a really, street. Listen, my Telegram channel's got about 2,000 people on it. So if you, if you think that that reached the masses and encouraged someone to attack someone that looks like you, I think you're just buying into this blame culture, right? Do you feel it's wrong for people to attack Chinese or, or East Asian looking people? Of course, it's ridiculous. It's, I mean, it's, look, I, I am not a multiculturalist. I do not want my nation flooded with different ethnicities. I think I've made that very clear. Mm -hmm. But I am a Christian and I, and of course, people attacking someone because they look like they're, they're Chinese or, or, or Asian, that's just, I mean, there's, Anybody who condones that is a moron. Would you be willing to tell your followers and that it's not, not okay? I shouldn't need to tell people, don't attack folk. I shouldn't need to do that. If it's entirely up to you, what would Britain look like? We're, we're, look, this is a white European Christian nation. And that is how I would like it to remain. Do people who look like me belong? in this place? Well, it depends on what you, what you mean by belong. If you, you're not indigenous to here, clearly. Well, I'm not, personally. A lot of people were born and bred here. Oh yeah, but that doesn't make them indigenous. I could be born in a stable, it doesn't make me a horse. <laughs> people should stay in their respective nations. And then we can enjoy each other's culture when we visit. I'm really struggling to understand this on an individual basis. I sort of live here. My husband is Welsh. Does that make you uncomfortable? Personally, I wouldn't marry outside of my race. Why is that? Because I'm a nationalist. It means that I love you... my people, I love my race, and I want to see the continuation, the continuation of my people and my race. And by me mixing races, that's not seeing the continuum of my race or yours. In person, Jada Franson feels more amusing than menacing. But the toxification of the online environment she's contributed to still reverberates. Thank you for spreading your virus across the world. Let's all eat a diseased bat to celebrate what's the worst that could happen. Thanks, China. Don't even think about bringing your germs here. We don't want you. Where are you finding these comments? Are you on some right-wing website? Um, it's just on Facebook. So Boris Johnson posted a video wishing a happy Chinese New Year in 2020. A happy and prosperous Lunar New Year. Kung hei fa chong. Most of the comments that I saw coming right up at the top of the comments were quite extreme. So these are real people with real names, sometimes even real profile photos, leaving comments that are essentially racist for the world to see. Crazy how people are so bold about spreading hate now. Um, they don't even try and hide it. They don't even try and go by a different name or change their photos. They're just completely honest about their views. Have you tried to report these comments to Facebook or whatever platform they were on? Yeah, I've reported several comments um, and so have a few of my friends and it's just they don't get taken down. They respond by saying that it doesn't go against community guidelines. So for that reason, they're all just allowed to exist on a public platform. Yeah. That's almost like getting hurt a second time, right? Yeah. To, to be told by the platforms that essentially police our speech mm -hmm. that this is acceptable.
Fia, who grew up in Scotland, I've traveled to Edinburgh to meet her because I want to find out how a younger generation in the Asian community, having grown up with the internet, are handling racism online. I've actually seen a survey done by the government about online bullying. It says that Asian students are the least likely to get bullied online. What do you make of that? I think Asian students culturally are less likely to report um, bullying because it's what we're taught to do as kids. Knowing that young East and Southeast Asians are less willing to report hate incidents to authorities, Feya started a peer helpline in the first year of the pandemic. So we first of all offer them validation and support because a lot of the time the victims try and brush it off. Victims can kind of, as a, as a self-comforting process that they go through, they kind of say, oh, it wasn't a big deal. So we tell them that actually this was a hate crime or this was a hate incident. You have every right to report this to the police and we can offer to help them do that. Um, I think the most important thing is for victims to feel like they've been heard and for them to feel like they're supported by people around them because it can be a very isolating and very upsetting experience. In the face of inaction by the police and social media companies, it's falling on a 24-year-old to offer victims solace and empathy. I would also like to do something myself. Question is, how? In this scenario, I think we can all agree there's someone in danger here. Um, you guys haven't mentioned the police. Jaba Slam is a community activist. I've followed him for the past few weeks as he tries to get London's Metropolitan Police to investigate Mr. Wu's attacker for racially aggravated assault. Hello. Hi, Jabez. Hi, this uh, is Wei. Hi, hi, Wei. How are you? Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. I just wanted yeah. to give you a call, because remember that letter you wrote to the Met Police? Yep. Has anything come out of it? No, no, no. Okay, that's yeah. disappointing. Yeah. Aside from counting on the police, can we fellow citizens do something for one another? I've never witnessed racial abuse firsthand, but I do remember seeing someone having seizures on a train, and I was petrified. I really wanted to help, but really didn't know how. And I remember being terrified of doing something wrong to maybe make things worse. It wasn't my proudest moment, but if I have to guess, witnessing racial abuse, I wouldn't fare any better at all. That's why I'm here, learning what to do if I ever witness a racist attack. Every single time you're being in that situation, you're surprised. You don't know what to do. You do not know how to react. Clear from the attendants, I'm not the only one who feels the need to be equipped. So Andy is going to give you a scenario. What are some of the options? in that situation as an active bystander. So our scenario is a young girl who appears to be from East or Southeast Asian descent is sat in your train carriage. The man starts to make comments about Chinese people and coronavirus as he gets up to move a seat closer to her. He starts making racist comments about Chinese people directly to the girl and is becoming increasingly aggressive. Somebody else on the train stands up and tells him to F off, but this seems to make him more aggressive. What do we do? 
something okay. that I've heard before from yeah. people that have been in these situations. They've said yeah. that they would like people to send yeah. to them and check if they're okay and just talk to them and basically ignore the aggressor. I don't know, maybe in this situation he's kind of disrupted <laughs> with the other guy, the aggressor. Mm. What you could do is say, should we move to the next carriage? Should we get off the train for a bit? Let's get the next one. I don't know how they would react to you going and talking to this person who they obviously are attacking. I don't know if they would just turn around and start attacking you as well. In this scenario is often when someone brings up the police and calling the police. Um, I think we can all agree there's someone in danger here. You guys haven't mentioned the police. Any reason why not? And lots of like racialized people don't have particularly pleasant or non-violent interactions with police. So for me personally, the police are never going to be my first port of call in a situation like this. Turns out in the UK, the police are having a crisis of public trust. In a YouGov poll in October 2021, 50% of ethnic minorities say they do not trust the police, while only 44% say they do. I've contacted the Met Police for an interview, which they agreed to, but in subsequent follow-ups, I could never get them to commit to a time. That's why I've decided to head to Scotland Yard instead. Hello. Hi, uh, Alex? Yes, this is Alex. I'm Hi, Alex. Uh, this is Wei. Oh, no, I'm not in my office, I'm afraid so. The person on the phone with me is Alex Kuttner, the chairperson of the Met Police East and Southeast Asian Forum, a new organization the police set up in 2020 to tackle Asian hate. The week of November 8th, would it be possible if we just come around to have a quick chat with you? Uh, possibly, yes. Yeah. That turned out to be my last communication with Ms. Kuttner. She again did not respond to further attempts to confirm the timing of our interview. There's often a perception that only marginalized groups can suffer from racism and East and Southeast Asians are simply too successful to be victims. Mindy Chen Wishart is perhaps the most powerful East and Southeast Asian person in British academia. She's currently serving as the Dean of the Law Faculty at Oxford University, yet she's battling what she calls unconscious racism on a daily basis. I was uh, coming in, I forgot my, my card, and so I asked the Porters here, if they would just scan the door for me. And I got asked, uh, who was I visiting? Did I have an appointment? And I said, well, I'm the dean. What surprised me was that they followed me to check that I had the key for the door, as I was claiming to be the dean. If I have to be charitable, though, then I'd say the porters were simply doing their job. What's wrong with that? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, all of these incidents are explicable. And uh, I tweeted, why are they particularly good at their jobs when it comes to people of color? Um, for the people of color, it's incredibly wearing and it's just tiresome. Yeah, because everywhere they go, it's the same thing. And uh, I was thinking, the ax forgets what the tree remembers. It's an unconscious racism. And I mean, this is the difficulty. People do it, they, they don't intend to be mean. They don't even know they're doing it, really. That incident prompted Mindy to start a Twitter campaign sharing her experience with racism under the hashtag RaceMeToo. I'm walking my PhD student, who is also a person of colour, out of the college after our supervision, and we stop in the front quad to finish discussing a point. A white tourist is taking photos in the front quad and she says to us, can you please move out of my picture? I want to get an authentic shot of Oxford. What does she mean? Clearly, if you're thinking about Oxford academics, you're not thinking of someone who looks like me. We, we don't look Oxford. Have you had somebody coming up to you and say, Mindy, you're so successful, you've been given so much already. Why are you still trying to be a victim? I don't stand on my 
victimhood. But I think that I am the dean, and I have a platform, and I have a responsibility. I think I'm in a very protected position, and that's partly the reason I've taken the risk, I would say, to tweet about these things, because um, I think they give validation to people of colour who've written to me offline to tell me uh, how important it was to them to see somebody in a position to, who was not afraid to speak about it. It's heartening to see more East and Southeast Asians now openly talk about their experience with racism. But the problem didn't just come about in the UK. If anything, the pandemic simply cast it into the spotlight. So I want to trace the long history of racist attitudes towards people who look like me in Great Britain. Liverpool, home to the world's most legendary band, The Beatles, and once where the Titanic set sail. I've heard it's also home to an impressive Chinatown, and I've asked a local guide to show me around. Peter? Yeah. Hi, Hi I'm Wei. Right. So nice to meet you. Yeah. I hope you didn't wait for long. It's chilly. Freezing. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow, look yeah. at that. That arch is the largest arch in Europe, Chinese arch. Oh, wow. It's, you know, it's the oldest Chinatown in Europe. And there's a pub? Yes, the old Chinese pub. It's a Chinese pub? Wow. I've never been to a Chinese, Chinese pub. pub. It's, it's well known. Okay. All the sailors used to go in there. The Chinese sailors, that is. Next door used to be where Blue Funnel. The shipping company. Oh yeah, shipping company used to be next door. Liverpool's Chinese community dates back to the 1860s, when shipping company the Blue Funnel Line brought Chinese sailors to the city from the ports of Shanghai and Hong Kong. Once on shore, some sailors started families and opened businesses. A budding community started to build out from the original boarding house that the sailors stayed in. So how did your family get to Liverpool? When did they come? Um, my grandmother married Cantonese. My mother is half Chinese. So your grandmother is local Liverpool girl? Well, from Birkenhead, across the river. Right. What about your dad's side of the family? There's very little I know about him. How come? Because I've never met him. To the Chinese merchant seamen who served this country, during both world wars, and who after both world wars were required to leave. For their wives, left in ignorance of what happened to their men. For the children who never knew their fathers. That's you, Peter, is that talking about you? Yeah, that's true. Peter's dad was one of the Chinese sailors that came with the Blue Funnel Line. During the war, they were all drafted to help with Britain's defence. During the war, he was on the oil tankers, bringing fuel over from America to here, to this country. And do you know what happened after the war? He was forced to leave by this country. Starting in late 1945 and over the course of a year, with orders coming from London, the Liverpool police rounded up more than 2,000 Chinese sailors at night and put them on boats that took them back to Asia. 
When it happened, Peter was barely two years old. He only learned about what happened to his father after the government declassified related documents 50 years later. You just don't remember him at all? No, I didn't. What did your mom say while you were growing up? She didn't want to talk about it because I think she just thought he left her. Peter is now demanding an apology from the UK government with help from a local MP. Hello, Peter. Oh, hi, Peter. How are you doing? Hi. You're yeah. right, love. Mm -hmm. It's Wei. Hi, Kim. Wei. Oh, My nice name is Wei. So nice to meet you. Hmm? Oh, wow. So these are the names of the people who were repatriated on one ship. That's just one trip. Mm -hmm. These people went to Singapore and the others went to Hong Kong. How did they work this out? Did they come from Singapore or Hong Kong? No, they didn't come from either of those places. A lot of seamen um, were from all over China, but they were just literally abandoned in places that they had no connection with, no family connections, and just left to fend for themselves. I suppose when I look at this case, of course I understand the human aspect of it, but some people will say the Chinese sailors came for work. To what extent did they belong in Britain? Well, they did belong. They put their lives at risk, you know, to help and support the war effort. You know, they dodged bombs and war boats, you know, to keep this country afloat. And where would this country have been without that support? I think so. Um, I think the country owes the seamen a debt of gratitude, really, and it, this should never have happened. Do you think this would have happened to them if they were white? I don't think that would have happened at all. I believe it was um, an act of racism towards the Chinese seamen. As Chinese seamen, they were treated very differently. On board ship as well, they had the dirtiest and the dangerous jobs, and they received less money. And because of that, the Chinese seamen did go on strike and fought for um, the same pay as their white peers. And I think they were repaid because of that. It's been 75 years. Why do you think it's so difficult to get the government to recognise it? But it is an, an, an act that the, the government are probably ashamed of. Um, they want to brush it under the carpet. They prefer not to acknowledge what happened. <laughs> It's my first time in Liverpool. I had, of course, known about the football club and the Beatles and Titanic. But if I hadn't met Peter and Kim, I wouldn't have known anything about the Chinese sailors. Because perhaps it's just one of these stories that Britain doesn't like to tell about itself. And that's exactly how racism is perpetuated, by not telling the stories of minority groups by pretending that these people didn't play a part in making the country what it is today. Four weeks ago, I wrote in to London's Metropolitan Police asking for statistics on anti-Asian hate crimes. So the Met Police has finally sent me the numbers that I asked for. You could see in the beginning of 2020, a very sharp rise, at least in London, for hate attacks on East and Southeast Asians. But the incidents did fall back, perhaps because the country went into several lockdowns. Once we came out of the lockdowns though, the numbers are back up, not as extreme as before, but still certainly about 50% higher than 2019. Hardly a comforting trend to report. In Cambridge, Yuan Zhao is contemplating a second surgery to rectify the damage inflicted by his attackers five weeks ago. Hey,爸爸。嗯,还行,挺好的。就我不是做了第一次手术吗?恢复了大概两个多星期,然后我跟医生那边也视频复诊了一下。他看了一下,他说我现在这边其中有一边鼻子还是凸起来的。就是当时因为这个比较严重,他第一次复位手术压不下去,这个是有可能要做第二次手术的。Mm 
。对啊，这个这样一个可能就是给你造成的伤害就更大了。之前这个事情发生以后，嗯，爸爸也也一直想帮助你，从心理上各方面的。我知道这不是是一个大手术，但是因为是全麻嘛，你上次做手术，就我可能是几乎一晚上都没有睡觉。因为疫情，爸爸也也没法回去看你，就是你得靠自己。好，我知道。好吧。嗯，别担心。Has this incident changed your view of the UK at all? So my mother used to talk a lot about uh, this anti, uh, you know, Asian hate crime uh, happening in the UK, but I always thought it was a bit exaggerated. Uh, so even if my mother told me to be careful uh, on the streets, I was um, I thought it, it was a bit laughable until it really happened to me. What do you think it'll take for things to change? So I think the fundamental issue is uh, still about education. Um, for example, the Black Lives Matter uh, campaign, people are getting more and more aware of you know the uh, the history about black people um, in the U.S. or and also in other European countries, but. I think in the education system, we somehow lack a um, similar part for Asian people. Young people, they are not taught about the history about um, Asian people coming and working, um, you know, contributing to the society that we are living in right now. Following the abuse, Yuan Zhao started a petition to the Cambridge MP calling for efforts to counter Asian hate. So far, close to 2,000 people have signed on. He's also spoken at several forums to encourage other victims to speak up. It's now late November, and I've come to the end of my stay in the UK. I've learned a lot on this trip, like the long history of racism faced by Asians in this country and how a new generation is determined to fight back. Once again, the UK is staring at a brutal winter ahead with surging COVID figures. Will that invite another wave of attacks on people who look like me?